if we really understand chemically how keratin treatments are working, especially compared to other texture services, we can better make judgment calls on how to manipulate them and make them work best for us, best for our guests. So we're gonna talk about on a much smaller microscopic level, what's actually happening to keratin treatments, how they're different from perms and relaxers, how to care for them and make sure that the keratin treatment lasts as long as possible, and as stylists, what to do and how they interact with, with lightener. So if we're looking at the bonds on the hair, there are three main bonds that we manipulate when we're doing hair services. I'm gonna draw us a little, this is gonna represent our bonds here. And we have three different bonds happening. The first one that a lot of people are familiar with is the sulfur bond, usually referred to as the disulfide bond. And that is where two sulfur atoms hold that bond together. So we'll pop some little sulfur atoms in here. And then our other two bonds that we're dealing with are a hydrogen bond, big H for hydrogen. And then there's a salt bond. There are lots of different kinds of salts out there. The main one that we're gonna be concerned with and that I think most of us can readily identify is sodium chloride. In a sodium, Cl is chlorine, hydrogen is H. Sulfur is S. Now, when we're thinking about these three bonds, we have permanent and temporary bonds. Your sulfur bond is a permanent bond. Your hydrogen and salt bonds are temporary. When we're doing things like styling the hair with a blow dryer, a curling iron, doing a wet set, when you set your hair and then you get it wet, that's, that's a form of reshaping these temporary bonds. Both the hydrogen and the salt bonds are reshaped with moisture and heat or combination of those things. When we apply moisture or heat again, we're able to reshape those bonds. When you shampoo your hair, those bonds are reset and back to their sort of default, uh, wherever our natural texture lies or wherever we've permanently altered it to. We can permanently alter the bond by manipulating the sulfur or disulfide bonds. That's the bond we're manipulating when we're doing perms and relaxers. Each of those works slightly uniquely different, but what is happening as we're manipulating that sulfur bond, we are softening it, and in some cases breaking it, and then reforming it to a certain degree in a new shape. With perms, we're taking hair that's one texture, and we're going to apply a chemical in order to make that hair more curly than what we have. With relaxers, it's the opposite. We're going to apply our chemicals and reduce the curl. Reduce it, remove it. These are permanent processes because they involve that sulfur bond. Each of these was invented uh, a little more than 100 years ago. We know a lot about perms and relaxers because we've been studying them for a long time. The first machine that gave a perm was invented in 1906. And then um, the first thioglycolate perm solution was invented in 1941. The first cream relaxers to straighten hair were invented in 1909. We have about a hundred years worth of study behind those and really understand how they work. The first keratin treatments hit the market around 2007. So about a hundred years later, we invented keratin treatments. Keratin treatments use different chemicals and they are going to bond with the hydrogen and the salt bond and make them more permanent. So that means we're essentially making a shell around the hair, we're smoothing it out. Yes, we are repairing and replacing some missing keratin in the hair from environmental or chemical damage, but they are still temporary. Because keratin treatments work with that temporary bond, keratin treatments are temporary. These new generations of keratin treatments can last anywhere from one to six months, and then they wear away. You can almost think of them like color in a sense. If they're applied properly, they're not going to damage your hair. They're actually going to make your hair stronger and more resilient. Applied improperly, and that's usually an over application of heat, there is a small risk of damage. Hopefully your stylist who's doing it, or if you are a stylist, you're properly certified. So each one's going to last from one to six months, and then you can redo them. If we permanently change the texture of the hair with a perm or a relaxer, when we retouch, we want to do our best to retouch hair that has not been permanently changed. Take relaxers, for instance, you don't go from roots to ends with your relaxers every single time. Once the chemical bonds, the disulfide bonds in the hair are changed, then you don't want to try to change them again because they're no longer disulfide bonds. 
there's something else. When it comes to retouching perms and relaxers, you have to try to just do the new growth of the previously untreated hair. Since keratin treatments are temporary, yes, the more we stretch these bonds, for the most part, once that keratin treatment has run out, it's run out. So the retouching process on keratin treatments is just to redo them. Roots to ends, everything, treat the previous hair as untreated hair. Unless you're dealing with some, some other issues where the hair can't handle as much heat on the ends, that's gonna be a, a professional decision to make. So we understand a little bit how they work, how they're not like perms and relaxers. They're more like a, they're more like a heat style. They're a temporary thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you enjoy being nerdy about hair and hearing the occasional dad joke, go ahead and check out another one of my videos. If you want to see them as soon as they come out, go ahead and click subscribe. Feel free to share this video with any of your nerdy friends. I'll see you next time. Thanks.